Before sports, the people I actually looked up to was actually the guys that were like older than me. My older brother, the things he used to do, he used to get in trouble a lot. You know, if he gets arrested, he came out laughing. And I think that was the environment that we were in. And it all changed, I think, when I left Cape Town. Obviously, I stopped playing rugby. I think my, 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 my view and everything just changed dramatically. Hi, I'm Achiva Daimani. I'm, I'm a DHL Stormers player. I think the first time I found out about rugby, it had to be 2007 World Cup. And all I remember was Ryan Bella catching an interception and diving. And I think that was one of the coolest times. I was just wondering, how do people actually slide so far? And it was like something like Superman. And I started loving it and then started playing it. So when I actually moved to Joburg, teacher, Mr. Axel, okay, he asked me if I played rugby and I said, yeah, I played rugby, I played, you know, Brian and Banner and he's like, oh, it's not a position, but I know what you mean. He put me in the wing and I'll just run and start screaming and everyone just open up. And unfortunately, um, I end up moving a lot. You know, as a kid, it's not good to move, but I moved a couple of times. I went to probably like nine, 10 different schools and eventually rugby chose me. It's not something that I actually saw coming out. I, I can't even lie. And I know when most people speak and say, I knew it was going to happen. Uh, I, I prayed for it to happen. It's, I, I always knew this was going to happen. I personally never thought this would have been my life. I just kept on working and kept on doing what I felt like was right. And I think seeing what my family was going through and, and, and knowing the journey I came from is what kept me going. When I started playing rugby, guys were playing rugby for accolades, for um, recognition, you know, especially with the guys that had dads that stopped playing, that played for the school, played first team, now they want their sons to play first team. You know, I didn't care about those things. I, I, my main goal was just to, to, I felt like if I can just keep going, this is my way out. I felt like if, at the time, if I'm doing good and they spot me and I get a contract, that's, that's the main goal. Personally, I feel like I, I can't just look at it as just a passion. I think for me, it's a, it's, it's a way out, yeah. Almost growing up, obviously, with my, my brother, you know, going to prison, coming back, and doing what he wanted to do. As much as it was bad, but that was, to me, that was cool. And then obviously that changed, obviously, as I started playing rugby. Then I started going to school further and guys would like, I would meet guys who would say, no, listen, I want to be a policeman or I want to be this. And the type of role models I had then were all the people I looked at and I said, these people are changing the world without even knowing they're changing the world. Policemen, teacher, those are the type of people I looked up to. And it, it, my, 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 my whole idea of role models has changed and, and, and within the different parts of my life. Not everyone is as lucky as me. We, especially in South Africa, we have social backgrounds that are so totally different to each other. A kid from Joslovo, Danun, they don't need food parcels. You know, they need a way out. And feeding, I remember when I was a young soup kitchen, they would feed us for a day, and then the whole weekend, it's, it's, it's back to square one. You know, it, it's temporary. You know, giving me school shoes is not gonna take me out of where I'm coming of. Of, of the situation I'm in. Giving me clothes is not gonna take me out of the situation. So you giving me new jeans, I'm still gonna be in the same situation, you know? And that's people don't understand that. People think, oh, just get as much food parcels and just feed these people for a week. After feeding us for a week, you disappear, live your life, come back after a year. It's, it's not gonna do anything to us. I, I, I respect people that try to reach, go back to the community and do stuff. I think the main thing is change the way people see things. I think, um, changing people's mentality. I think that's the most important, like important part of everything. For me, it was very special. Usually we have medal ceremonies where we were shaking the president and vice president of whatever board and his hand, you know, and it, you can't relate to those people, you know, it's, it's people that's like, you know, I felt connected to these kids because it just ran me, ran me back to how excited they were to see us. 
and us seeing them that they're so excited and realize that we were once these kids, these kids, you know, we were once had this dream of shaking a, 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 someone that's famous or someone that's just won something's hands. And especially when I went to the kid, the kid just, you know, he couldn't believe it, like he couldn't wait to come to me and the guy just kept on holding him back. And it just took me back to realize that, listen, man, we take so many things for granted. Um, when, when, when we're in a certain situation, but when you actually look back, that was actually you once upon a time. And I just relived those moments and I realized that, listen, uh, it's actually good to dream, you know, because you just never know where you'll end up.